lab 14 script driven test bench the goal of this lab exercise is to create a sophisticated script driven test bench to verify the complete model of the alarm clock design to verify the complete functionality of the alarm clock is more complex than anything we have tested so far and hence we use a different approach to design the test bench instead of driving and sequence of inline stimulus in the test bench we will use a modular script driven self checking approach to verify the full functionality of the alarm clock to keep the test bench well organized we use a separate set programs to test each major function of the alarm clock and the design can be then verified by calling these sub programs in the desired order with the required data to make our test bench as flexible as possible the sequence of sub programs and associated data will be controlled by a series of user defined commands read in from a text file called command.txt this makes it easy to write the code for our test bench we simply have to read in a new command from the external text file check what command it is and then call the appropriate sub program Once this test bench is written, creating new test sequences will be very easy. The functionality and the procedure associated with each command is listed in the table. The file command.txt consists of the list of commands where each command represents a test scenario. For example, time 0030 checks for the normal operation where it advances the time to 0030 test 2 alhr01 increments the alarm r to 01 test 4 al tog toggles the alarm on signal test 6 show alarm displays the alarm time value Test 7 ALHR00 increments the alarm R to 00 and checks for the rollover happen and so on. Also manually checking the simulation waveform displays becomes impractical with complex designs and long simulation runs. A simple pass or fail test is required. Hence we must implement a convenient way of checking that our design is working correctly. For this we will sample the design outputs and write out the values to an external trace file then we can easily check if the simulation behavior is correct by comparing the trace file to a set of known good results stored in some other file we will also use assertion messages inside the test bench to check for and report on specific error conditions the test bench should also be robust enough to reject any mistyped commands like shlam and handle any invalid operations like increment hour that is ti hour 99 so our test bench should follow the following actions where we read the command from the external file read the correct number of data values depending on the command call the appropriate procedure with the correct parameters to execute the operation check for successful completion of the operation and report a message if an error is found and execute all the commands in the file let us look at each of these procedures in detail for example for show alarm we need to press the show alarm signal for 5 seconds and then release it so the procedure do show alarm drives show alarm to 0 indicating the alarm press condition then wait for 5 seconds and then deactivate the show alarms signal by driving it to 1 all these procedures are defined in the package alarm_test in the file p_alarm_test.vhd we shall declare the constants for the clock period For a 128 hertz clock we need 64 periods to represent 1 half second and 10 half second periods will form 1 five second period also we need 7680 clock cycles to represent 1 minute period 
we declare the timeout constants that we use in our procedures. If there is a problem with the design or if an invalid command like AL when it 99 is entered, the digits may never reach the required values. Therefore, the procedure must incorporate a timeout. This will wait until the condition is true up to the timeout value. We declare all the procedures required by the commands. We input the data into the procedures in a string format. This needs to be converted into a standard logic vector in the procedures. Hence, we declare a function cat 2 vec which performs this operation. In the package body alarm underscore test, we implement these procedures. For a given value of care, we assign vec with the corresponding 4-bit standard logic vector. If can takes the value other than 0 to 9, indicating an invalid condition, we declare VEC with 0000, 0, 0, 0 and report an error condition using assert report statements. The command AL underscore min DD will execute the procedure do underscore AL underscore min which increments the alarm minute time. We know that to increment the alarm time, we need to press the show alarm and minute button. This triggers the time set component to set the alarm minutes into its new value. We can't predict what the alarm time will be when do underscore al underscore min subprogram is called. Therefore, we must monitor the alarm clock display digits until they reach the required values using a wait until statement. This requires the display digits to be passed into the procedure as signal class input parameters. Now, if there is a problem with the design or if there is any invalid command like almin 99 is entered, the digits may never reach the required values and hence the procedure must incorporate a timeout to account for such cases. For that, we need to add a for clause to wait statement and assert to achieve this. LSmin, MSmin are the outputs in the alarm underscore clock dot VHT. We convert the input string into a vector value and name it as MS set and LS set. We apply the alarm and minutes by driving them to zero. Then we wait until the MS min and LS min becomes equal to the required value MS set and LS set for a time period of max min set. And check if MS min equal to MS set and LS min equal to LS set using an assert statement. If this is false, then we report an error using the report statement. Finally, we disable the show alarm and minutes button. The similar logic goes for all other procedures. The time underscore dd command calls the procedure do underscore time which checks for the normal operation that is the time advancing to dd dd. For the normal time operation, no button is pressed. And we just wait for the time to increment to the given value for a given timeout period and report an error if this fails. Add the command input process to the test bench code of the previous lab. The process command underscore input reads the command from the text file command.text and generates the input stimulus to the block under test depending upon which command it read in. We see that every command takes at least 5 string values to represent the command and a separator followed by the data value accounting for a total of 10 characters. We loop through all the commands in the file by using the while construct until we reach the end of the file. Reading the next line from the text file, 
and read the first text string from the line and call this CMD. From depending on what value the CMD takes, we read in any extra information. For example, for command AL talk, we don't need to read anything. For AL underscore R, we need to read two digits. And for time, we need to read four digits. When the command is show alarm, we need to call the procedure do underscore show alarm and pass the show alarm signal as input and we don't need any other data or control signals to be passed in. For ti underscore min, we need to pass two digits of the minute component into the procedure along with the signals display underscore ms underscore min display underscore ls underscore min along with the control signal minutes. Similarly, for command al underscore mn, we call the procedure do underscore al underscore mn and pass the two digits of the time along with ms min, ls min and the control signals show alarm and minutes. Similarly, al talk calls the procedure do underscore al talk and we just pass the alarm on signal as input. If any invalid commands are read, then we report an error. The trace output process writes the output onto a text file trace.text. We wait until there is any change in the value of any component of the time or alarm sound. We write the current simulation time first and then a space convert the display from bcd to character with colon to separate hours and minutes write display and then a space write alarm status using tick image to convert the standard logic to character hence the output file trace.txt consists of multiple rows where each row contains simulation time followed by space followed by time in our colon digit format followed by the alarm status. The AL detect process will derive the alarm underscore sound signal from the LED which is output by the alarm clock. We wait until LED is high then drive alarm underscore sound with 1 and we hold this value until the value of LED becomes 0. Let us now run the simulation in batch mode. We don't see any error reported. Let us view the output in the text file trace.txt and compare it with the values stored in the file gold.txt. We see that at all simulation times, the expected result is matching with the actual result. We can look for any mismatches by executing the diff command in Linux and we see there are no any mismatches. This has greatly simplified the error checking. We can also view the output on the waveform. Adjust the time scale. From the waveform, we see that when the command executed is time 0030, we see the counter increment until it reaches the value 30. Next, Command AL underscore HR01 is executed. This increments the hour component of the alarm until it reaches the value 01. We check for the LSR increment. Once it reaches 1, the next command AL underscore MN06 is executed. This enables the show alarm and minutes button. 
and disables the hours button. We know that show alarm hours and minutes are active low and it increments the ls min component of the time until it reaches the value 6 and then and then it executes the command alarm talk which toggles the alarm on signal let us add the signal time underscore data and alarm underscore data from the design under test into the waveform and rerun the simulation to verify the alarm functionality. We see that when alarm underscore data equals time underscore data, the alarm sound signal goes high. This verifies the alarm functionality of the design. We can also view the output in the file trace.txt and compare it with the expected result stored in the file gold.txt. We can also see the alarm bit going high when time underscore data equals alarm underscore. We have already synthesized this design in the previous lab. This verifies the design and verification of alarm clock.